Hello, Monetization Nation. I'm Nathan Gwilliam, your host. In the last episode, I shared with you 15 lessons that we've learned from publishing our show every day for a year. And in this episode, I'm going to share with you the final 15 lessons that we've learned from publishing every day for a year. So lesson number 16, continuing from, from the last lesson, is that sound really matters. It matters a lot more than I thought it did when I started. I couldn't really hear the difference and I, I didn't understand the nuances at the beginning. And I first started off with a, a Blue Yeti and I learned very quickly that it picked up way too much unwanted sound. I, I'm i in a, a room that's above a garage and so every time that garage would open, that garage door would open or that garage door would close, uh, that blue yeti sure picked it up and uh and uh it it did not produce a great listening experience and so i i went through multiple mics and i i finally found this one that i like and it's not that expensive it's i switched to this audio technica atr 2100x it's a usb cardioid dynamic microphone you can just find it on amazon and it made a huge difference in reducing that unwanted noise i i don't make any money when you buy this mic um but i'm giving you this advice so that you don't you don't have to learn this lesson the hard way and and record lower quality uh sound than what you want and then have to make the switch uh, the, that cardioid polar pattern, it reduces the pickup of unwanted sounds from the sides and from the rear. It improves isolation of desired sound sources. And one more key point is at the beginning, I didn't realize how to identify which microphone was was being used for my show. And so even though I had the right microphone and the right microphone was plugged in, my computer that I was recording from was still recording from my, uh, my laptop microphone. And it took me numerous episodes before a guest on my show who was kind enough to help me figure out what was going on, showed me how to, how to identify the source. So make sure you're not just using the right mic microphone, but make sure before every episode that you go into your computer and you check what microphone source is being used for the recording. The 17th lesson that we learned from doing this show every day for a year is the power of live streaming. This is a powerful lesson we learned uh, much more towards the end of the year uh, many of the platforms where we publish the show have changed their algorithms to preference live stream content. In other words, there's a, a mathematical formula that determines which content shows up higher and how many people see that content. And because live streaming is so new on so many of these platforms, they're preferencing that type of content in their algorithm. And that presents a great opportunity for show creators. So we need to seize that opportunity while it still exists, and it probably won't exist forever, but we need to focus on creating more live stream content. I, I encourage each of us to produce at least one live stream per week and get it out there. And you'll probably find that it's promoted to more people than your pre-recorded episodes. The 18th lesson that we've learned from doing this show is to look at the camera and try really hard to not read. This is something I've had a really hard time with. And I found that I do a lot better when I'm doing an interview. I can look at the person and, and talk and have a conversation. And I've I found that I, I do really well with shorter episodes about topics that I know about. But I've had a harder time with longer episodes. And a mentor that's been working with me taught me that I should just do bullet points. I should never do a script. I should never read from a script. And I should pause the recording or, or have the editor cut out part of the recording and read part of it, one bullet point. And then I should look up at the camera and say the bullet point. And I'm not perfect on this. This is, this is one of the biggest areas where I'm still struggling, but it's an area where I'm doing a lot better and it's an area where I'm focused on improving. And I think show creators that, that focus on looking at to, into the camera are a lot more engaging than show creators who don't. The 19th lesson that we learned from doing this show is to hook faster. Early on in running my show, I received bios from guests 
And those bios were sometimes very long. And I read way too much of those bios as part of my early interviews. And as my show has progressed over the last year, I don't know if anybody's noticed, but uh, the bios have been getting shorter. And we've been focusing on just including the key points that establish the credibility of the author, but but not including more information in, in that bio than we need to. And that's not trying to take anything away from the guest. I'm, I'm not trying to say they're not credible or that I don't want to read their bio. The point here is if I read a really long bio, I find that my audience gets bored and they leave. And so if I want my audience to listen to that guest longer, I've got to make the bio shorter and I've got to hook them faster. I've got to tell it what's in it for them and hook them and engage them much sooner. The 20th lesson that we learned from doing this show every day for a year is to have a much shorter intro. At the beginning, I recorded an intro and I thought I wanted to tell them all about the show. And I realized that this causes people to drop off the show. I realized that the intro needs to be much shorter, less than 10 seconds, so that we can hook the listeners faster. If we do long intros, we're going to have a lot of people drop off and, and bounce. The 21st lesson that we learn from doing this show every day for years is to use project management software and to systematize the process so that things don't slip through the cracks and we can be efficient at getting things done. And so I encourage show creators to plan out every step of the process and identify who's responsible for every step of the process. And then use a project management software to keep track of where every episode is in that process. You, you may get to a spot, especially if you have a daily show where you have 60 or 90 episodes that have been recorded, but haven't been published yet. And to keep track of all of those without a project management system is, is a not, not very effective, not very efficient. And, and things are going to slip through the cracks. So project management system helps you save time and money in your production. It helps you Present yourself much more professional to people outside, uh, to your guests and, and your audience. Helps you move through the process faster. Helps you avoid making mistakes and, and forgetting steps. And I highly encourage it. The 22nd lesson that we learned from doing the show every day is to schedule times to batch. I learned this lesson from John Lee Dumas where he'll record all his episodes one day or he will you know, record another element of his show all on one day. It's kind of like an assembly line. When we focus on doing one thing over and over again, it helps us to be much more effective and efficient at that one thing. It also, our, our minds, as we switch from one thing to the, the next, we lose uh, focus and concentration in that process. And so if we allow ourselves to focus on like tonight, I'm, I'm recording a whole bunch of episodes all together in a row. It allows me to be focused on just that. And I end up at the end of the day getting a lot more done than if I do one episode here, one episode here, one episode there. The 23rd lesson that we learned and learned the hard way is to get ahead and stay ahead on your production schedule. So early on in my show, I remember times where you know, we, we'd committed to publish every day and we were publishing at 1155 at night. And that is not a good way to do it. I recommend that you, you get ahead, that you get a month ahead before you even launch your first show and you don't launch until you're ahead. It's just a lot more stressful when you're doing things at 1155 at night. This just gives you a lot more flexibility. So your show doesn't control you. If you get sick for a week or COVID for two weeks, or if you want to go on vacation or somebody passes away, my, my father-in-law uh, passed away this year and we went down to Arizona and spent time with him and with family. And by being ahead on the show, um, it gave me time to get through COVID myself. It gave me time to, to deal with a, a father-in-law who passed away. If, if I was producing on a day-to-day -day basis, um, that would have not given me the flexibility to do things that may have been more important in my life. So reduce your stress level, have a lot more fun, get ahead at least a month ahead and stay at least a month ahead. The 24th lesson that we learned from publishing this show is to have emergency content ready. Write a few blog posts, even record a few episodes that you don't even put in your schedule. You just keep them set aside in a folder somewhere 
for when an emergency happens. You never know when at the last minute a guest is going to ask you for edits that you can't get done in time, or they're going to ask you to pull their show and not run their show, or something's going to happen in your personal life or the personal life of someone on your team. It'll save you a lot of stress if you have some emergency content put away. So the 25th lesson that we've learned from doing our show every day for a year is the importance of quality assurance. And we've learned this lesson the hard way. Early on in our show, uh, we made some mistakes and some things slipped through the cracks and that wasn't fair to the guests and it was kind of embarrassing for us. So I've learned that we need to have two sets of eyes looking at everything. You have your editor look at it and then you have your producer look at it before it goes live. The 26th lesson that we learned from publishing our show every day is the power of stories. If we want to say something that's going to be engaging, that people are going to remember, that's going to have impact and cause change, it will probably be in story form. I encourage you to teach what you want to teach through stories. Whatever principle you're going to teach, go find a great story for it and say it. And it will probably be internalized a lot more, remembered for a lot longer by your target audience. And personal stories are better whenever possible. The 27th lesson that we learned from doing our show every day for a year is the power of repurposing. Some people say that you should start off by only producing your show in one place. Keep it simple. And I don't agree with that. It takes so much effort to get a guest and record a show and edit a show and, and publish a show. And it doesn't take that much more effort to repurpose that content and publish it in other places. To record via video and be able to use that as audio and be able to use that as video and get it to all the different video platforms that are relevant and all the different uh, podcast platforms that are relevant and, and to get someone to help you create a blog post for each episode and publish that on the different uh, text appropriate platforms. Like I said earlier, a lot of the different forms of content have different benefits to you. For example, if you just publish as a podcast, you lose the benefit of getting in search engines that you could get if you published a blog as well. Or if you don't publish a video, you lose the power of being in, in YouTube, which is the number two search engine that more and more people are turning to for their educational how-to type searches. So if, if you really want to grow your show, I highly encourage you to consider repurposing your content and, and use a system and use a platform that will help you to effectively repurpose it with a lot less effort. The 28th thing that we learned from doing this show is the power of mid-roll ads. Now, I personally have not done mid-roll ads because I haven't really had a product to sell, but I've heard from multiple show creators, from other guests, um, people that have taken my survey, that one of the biggest mistakes they made was not implementing mid-roll ads sooner. So as soon as we get our products launched and rolled out, we will definitely implement mid-roll ads next year to help uh, promote those products. The 29th lesson that we learned from doing the show every day for a year is the power of credible sources and how important it is to bring credible sources into your shows. So if you want to share a thought, if you want to share an idea, before you record that episode, go find a statistic or two. Go find a case study, go find a story, go find a quote that backs up your idea from another credible source. Instead of it just being your idea, if you can bring the credible source in, um, it, it lends a lot more credibility to the message you're sharing. And you'd be surprised how easy those credible sources are to find. And finally, the 30th lesson that we learned from doing this podcast every day for a year is to be patient with the process. It, it does take more time than you think it's going to take to get your show going. I've heard of some podcasters who don't even look at their statistics for the first year. They focus just on their show because they know their stats are going to be low and they don't want to get discouraged. And there are some show creators who obsess over their statistics and look at them every day or multiple times a day and it's not uncommon for those show creators to quit, to get discouraged and, and give up. We need to be slow and steady. We need to remember that it was the tortoise that was slow and steady that won the race and not the hare that tried to 
run the race quickly and, and didn't finish the race. The race is won here by the show creator that is slow and steady and consistent, consistently doing a good job, consistently promoting the show, but not having too high of expectations that they're going to get discouraged. Let your show episodes build upon themselves. Let your show get stronger and, and better each month that you're producing it. And don't worry about every single day of statistics. So that's it. That's the 30 lessons now that we've learned from publishing our show every day for a year. And in the next episode, I'm going to talk about what comes next for Monetization Nation. What are our plans for the future? Thank you so much for joining me for this episode. Thank you so much for joining me for the past year. I've been grateful to have you as an audience and uh, I wish you success in your ventures. Do you want to become a better digital monetizer? To receive great monetization stories and secrets, please go to monetizationnation.com and join free. And if you liked today's episode, please subscribe to the show and share it.